Ah, uh, there's a place in your house where it's cool to chill, get some me time, or even cook a meal. It's your kitchen, mofo. Ain't no time to slack. So just grab yourself a penny and let's work that ass. If you're scared of this place, ain't no need to bother. Just lay down your weapons and pick up another. <laughs> yeah, you should have seen the look on his face. There was cake everywhere. Hi guys. How's it going? Welcome to my Virgin Kitchen. Um, first of all, I need to apologise about the uh, last video I did, the sangria. I got a bit drunk when I made that. Some of you guys like that, um, so maybe I'll do some more. Um, but it was a bit of a blur to me. Um, 12 hours straight sleep, fully dressed, straight after <laughs> I basically finished filming. and uh, It was the best night's sleep I've ever had, but um, editing the video brought back some odd memories. And uh, Dad, if you're watching, I'm sorry about the phone call, but I needed you. Anyhow, today, Dennis from Seattle, hi Dennis, how's it going mate, has asked me to try and make the American dish, or side dish, or savoury thing, meatloaf, okay? Not like the singer, I would do anything, you know, the guy with the long hair, no, it's like quite a savoury meaty snack thing. I was thinking if you do like a vegetarian one, is that called veggie loaf? I don't know, let me know, okay? Uh, so these are all the ingredients you need. Hit pause on the video and write them all down. I'm just sort of doing an MVK version of it, okay? MVK for my virgin kitchen. Um, basically, it's quite popular to serve meatloaf alongside a baked potato, but I thought to make it super lazy, I had a load of leftover salad potatoes like that. What I'm going to do in my loaf tin, we're going to put a layer of the meat first of all, then we're going to put some potatoes on top with some grated cheese to act as a cement, and then put over some more meat on top. The oven does all the work for you on this one. Get all your prep done, which I have already done, because I'm not showing you. We've shown you how to do prep enough times now. We're adults now. We need to learn. Sorry, a bit serious there. So basically, the mixing bowl is the mothership for this. It all goes in there, and then in the tray, like that. So, let's get on and get cracking. Halfway through, I'm gonna tell you a story that might interest you. And, uh, again, I'm sorry. Okay, so for this recipe, grab yourself your bowl, like so. I'm just gonna run this through straight off. We're just gonna get it all done. So your bowl, like this. First of all, we'll grab our minced beef, mint stuff, like that. Straight out the pack, like that. The cling film is not on the back. So shove that straight in, like so. Similarly, your pork. I guess you can use different combinations of meat in this. I was thinking of doing like a Battenberg style by having beef and pork and chicken and maybe even lamb. You know, just mix it up a bit. I don't know. Give that a go. See what you think. Anyhow, yeah, pork is going in there. Wow. So that is our meat all in there. Okay. Bread crumbs, got 50 grams there. It's just maybe some fresh bread. Just blended that up. Just scatter that in there like a snow effect. Lovely. We've got some onions here all chopped up. It's actually half an onion, roughly chopped. Tomato puree there. I've got... That was just over a teaspoon, okay? Can you see that? Kind of looks like something a cat might leave in your garden. I hate cats. I hate cats. That goes in there, like so. What have we got? Oh, excuse me. A little bit of puree on my hands and thinking about the cat thing I just said. That's disgusting. Anyhow, let's grab our shot glasses, like so. In this one, I've got a teaspoon of English mustard powder stuff. Cha-ching. Being an American dish, I imagine you can get American pust pustard powder? Pustard powder? Mustard powder. Right. Garlic clove, chopped roughly, as you can see, nice and chunky. In that goes. Teaspoon of sage as well. That is just sage out of a jar, or if you've got sage leaves, you might have a sage plant in your garden. Chop them up, you know what you've got to do. Plus plonk that in, like that. A little bit of paprika, again a teaspoon. From height, like that. I think, is that it? Oh no, we've got salt and pepper there. Just your standard salt and pepper. Cha-ching. In that goes, like that. And last but not least, an egg. Okay, the whole egg and the white, just pour that in on top like that. And if you can see that, that is that all in there, everything you need to do now. So, you can either be a little bit wimpish and go, Ooh, and like use a spoon, or you can get your hands right in there. And my friends, being butch, we're gonna do the hands. So just mix it all together. I know I'm touching raw egg, but just wash your hands after with soap. Let's go. Yeah. Right here then guys, so you've got this mixture all congealed and mixed together and all funky and stuff like that and I know what you're thinking, it would make a darn good burger mix and it would, and this extractor hood thing is nearly in my head, don't worry about that, it's, it's fine, it's just there for decorational purposes. Um, yeah, you could do that and especially some of you Americans watching that, you know, you're like, oh my god, that's not how you make meatloaf. Uh, you could just make burgers and, you know, it's fine, you can just stop the video now, but it's cool. This is what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take half of that mixture, if you want, if you want to avoid the hand thing, get a spoon and place it into your greased loaf tin, like this, okay? It's greased, you know, go grease, yeah, it's greased. Okay. Halfway up, please. Halfway up. Thank you. Okay, so before I fill this up, I wanted to show you, this is actually a very small loaf tin. If you've got a larger one, just double up your ingredients. You'll know when you buy them, you look at it and go, there is no way it's going to fit in that. So we're going to do our first layer up to about halfway like that. So uh, let's just pack it in. 
Yep, so mine's in there and I'm just packing it down with the back of a wooden spoon, like so. Make sure it's nice and even. So just get that in there till you're happy with it. Then we're gonna put on our layer of potatoes and cheese. Okay, yeah, so that's in there nice and flat now. So I'm just gonna grab my salad potatoes. I haven't even peeled them then. I've left them a little bit rustic. So I'm just gonna put them on there like that. You could even cut them into square shapes if you wanted. So we could do that there. Do, do, do. So work all the way down it till it's completely covered. Okay, cool. They actually look a little bit like bananas, don't they? But anyhow, we're gonna leave them like there. And it's actually fitted in really neatly in rows of three, as you can see, kind of cool. So let's just sprinkle our cheese on top, which I've grated. Not too heavy a coating, but just enough. It's gonna hopefully give it a little bit more gooeyness on there when it all melts together, holds the potatoes in there. When we slice it up, hopefully, we'll, we'll see what happens, you know? This is all new to me, but we'll see how we get on. Yeah, okay, so I'm happy with that cheesy layer now. It's all nice and flush. It's not bulging one side and the other one's, uh, you know, nice and shallow. So we'll just get our second layer of meat on top. Let's uh, just start getting that on there. Yep, so I just whacked it all on there and all I'm doing is just pressing it in, making sure it doesn't go over the edges, working it around to get it nice and flush. All good, my friends, all good. Right, hey presto, that is done. Look, all nice and flat and compounded. It almost looks like a brick when you're building a house. In fact, if I made enough of those, maybe I could make a meatloaf house. And maybe that is what meatloaf lives in. I don't know, maybe we'll have to ask him. I need help. Anyhow, so you might have seen earlier, I had this greased piece of grease-free paper. All, right, all we're gonna do is obviously grease this end. I've just got a little bit of butter and rubbed it along there. You just wanna put that on top like that, just to seal it down and that is going to help it not burn too much when it goes in the oven, okay? We're going to peel it off with the last 10 minutes to go. So all we've got to do now is plonk that in the oven. Let's get it in there. <laughs> okay, so this is going in the oven now. The oven is at 180 degrees centigrade or gas mark four. Okay, so that's just going in there. We might even turn it around halfway through because that's what we do. And it's actually going to go in there for a good hour and a half. Now, I just want to quickly say thank you very much to the love to everyone that's been sending me all the, I love your videos and stuff. It really, it's really nice, you know. Um, anyway, particularly Caitlin Kamelski, who said hello recently. Hi, Caitlin, welcome to this journey. And also, there was this guy the other day, Dalton Kip. I love that name. Sounds like a secret agent. Right, Dalton? Cheers for the love. Let me tell you about a little story. We're going to get there. I'm going to take a seat. I hope you're ready for a ride. Okay, so I'm going to tell you this story. I've never told you before. I don't know why. I probably should have. It's not really that great. But anyhow, I've found a seat in my virgin kitchen. It's so busy in here these days. I'm about to sit on the dustbin like so. And uh, if you just got a shot of my crotch, I do apologise in advance. Anyhow, anyhow, anyhow. Three years ago, when Mrs. Barry was pregnant with Phoebe, <laughs> how, how she has grown, there was this thing on Radio 1, which is a massive radio station in Great Britain. It's the national station, actually, run by the BBC. And it, there's a, a DJ called Scott Mills, who, who's a really nice guy. And... Um, Basically, did. if your name was Barry, which <laughs> my name is Barry, you could go in, ring up. Well, you didn't go in, you rang up and said, hi, my name is Barry. And you could sing Barioke, okay? So they took out, the, the, the format of Barioke was you took out key uh, words in the chorus uh, and changed it to the Barry. And I did the song uh, Vogue by Madonna. Uh, yeah, which is kind of cool. But there was loads of other ones. There was Michael Jackson, a smooth Barry and things like that. And it got a little bit crazy, okay? So I did that song and here's a little snippet of it. Look around. Everywhere you turn is heartache. It's everywhere that you go. Look around. You try everything you to escape. Pain of life that you know. Life that you know. Yeah. My singing is that bad. That is the one reason I've only ever done karaoke. Karaoke, I don't touch it, okay? I don't know, maybe it's a Barry thing. So then it got a little, they took it to another level. It proved so popular that they did this thing in the summer where they invited everyone down who, who participated in Barry Aoki uh, to Barry Island, which is a place in Wales, quite close to where I work at the moment, actually. And uh, yeah, they wanted us to sing live on the radio in front of people. And it was kind of cool being in a room full of people all with the same name. Like, hey, Barry, Barry. And then everyone would look around. So uh, yeah, if you're interested in seeing a full road trip of that, I actually did a separate U YouTube channel at the time of that, which um, there's actually in six parts, but maybe I'll put it together on one video at some stage. Uh, it just tells you the whole start to finish and you see all the other berries on there. And uh, yeah, it was kind of cool. Um, here's a little snippet of me singing it live though. <laughs> Okay, so I thought I'd just share that with you. Um, some of the barriers were total legends. It was a real good time. We actually did some other songs after as well. We did uh, We Are The World, we, did, we Are The Barries, and there was a Christmas one, which was kind of cool. And we're even talking about maybe having a Barry reunion one day. So uh, you never know. Um, good memories, good times. Um, I've got an hour and 20 minutes to kill. So I'm gonna go have a nap. And then we'll see what this meatloaf turns out like, baby. Yeah. 
Okay, that has been an hour and 15 minutes. I've taken out, I span it around once. It's smelling amazing in here. I'm gonna just peel off this top layer here. Look, we've got a little bit of shrinkage. It has come away around the edges. We're not gonna worry about that. Our layer is still intact. You can see it's melted a little bit. Potato should all be cooked under there. So we're gonna plonk it back in the oven. Plonk it, plonk it back in the oven for another 15 minutes. Then we're gonna get it out. We'll see what it tastes like, baby. Yeah. Right here, so I'm just about to get out of the oven using my funky boom, 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 boom uh, oven gloves. So let's just uh, take it out there. Holy schmoly. Wow. Can you see the shrinkage on there? It's gone all nice and dark, but wow. You need to make sure you really pack that meat in. So let's let it cool down a little bit. Then we'll taste it. Okay, so we let it cool down a teeny bit, not too much because I don't want it stone cold, okay? So what I'm gonna do is grab myself a chopping board like this. I'm gonna sit it on this eventually. Sit it flat on top, then grab a tea towel. Hold the bottoms of the loaf tin like that, and then we're going to flip. We're going to go one, two, flip. Okay, cool. So take your tea towel away, lift the chopping board up, pull the tea towel out. It should be nice and loose, obviously because it's shrunk as well. The loaf tin should come off nice and easy. Let's just give it a go. Wow. Well, hey, cool. So that is our meatloaf all done. Mm. One potato fell out the side, it's all good. And if I turn it around this way, it looks a little bit better. Let's get it in the belly and see what it tastes like, baby. I'll go now, okay? Yeah. Right here then, guys, so it's all done. I've got it there, nice big slice, loads to go around. And to be honest, it's a lot more moist than I was thinking it was gonna be, which is a good thing. I didn't want it too dry. And obviously you've got the cheese holding together the potatoes there in that layer. It's looking good. Let's get into it and see what it tastes like. I'm just gonna break it down straight away like that. Let's have some cheesy potato and the meatloaf. Still quite warm. Oh wow, that is actually pretty darn good. You Americans people have got some darn good taste. I am loving that, let's just have another little bit more of that. Wow, oh, I love that. So thanks Dennis for sending that recipe request in. I might just go ahead and eat all this meatloaf right now. If I can make that, absolutely anyone in the world can. Have a go for yourself. Let me know how you get on and I'll see you again next time. Cheers.